how does development and the deployment process for tiny ML differ to like traditional ML pipelines? As I brushed on that in our previous question, it's, it, 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 there are extra steps involved. You yeah. might start off with doing how you would do it traditionally and training a very traditional model, which you could call it like a teacher model or something like that, a much larger model for annotating maybe a larger data set. Then you would have to create a, a much smaller model that's optimized for that hardware that can actually run, like I said, real time on the device. And that can be very tricky. For example, with wakeboard detection, that was something where we, we used a very small neural network to do it. And we had to really optimize for that. And, and that was something very challenging um, because it's always cooler if you can use a really big model or something like that. But given these kinds of constraints, you have to scale down a bit. And as I said, normally people use TensorFlow Lite for these kinds of things currently. I don't know how that's going to be in the future. This might be already outdated in a month or two, what I'm saying, the way that you can go. But that's something where you might have to convert a model. Onyx is also quite popular and you might have to convert your model, scale it down, distill it, something like that, compress it, use uh, some sort of quantization or something like that with it. Um, and on the other side, running the model, as I said before, can be something challenging. You need to actually create a runner uh, for inference that is, uses C++ or Rust or something like that. For example, we have a couple of Rust developers in our Secretsoft AI community, and we're very lucky because I don't know how to write in Rust or anything like that. I'm just the Python guy being the day mostly. And they build very optimized runners to, to actually okay. run this stuff. And you have to then pack it all into a binary file that'll yeah. just run on the device. And yeah, those extra steps are quite challenging. Like I said, most data scientists and other people in this industry don't really know about those things. And five, six years ago, most people in the industry starting with data science and, and analytics also did not know much about ML ops either and how to really deploy a scalable mm -hmm. solutions. So I think it's just another thing that we're going to have to learn and add to our CV and be a probably. Yeah, another, yeah, continue to grow and I think more. Yeah, like I say, you like said, envelopes. Yeah, that was just a bit more unknown back then. Now it's obviously, yeah, growing in popularity. And I guess something to say here, I think is obviously big old businesses are looking to improve, aren't they? And how can they improve processes, efficiency? And I guess new, new things come in. So you've got to apply it uh, to your business. So then, bright, intelligent, and data science world, you're an expert in what you do. 